call it a black comedy. You know, the story goes like this. I'm learning what psychoticism, psychoticism, is all about, and it can be frightening as to the level of insanity that can exist in one person. It started Tuesday night when I got home from work. No. It started when John, my boss at the Museum of Natural History, told me to do some dusty work in the back room, to dismantle, take apart all the years of catalogs accumulated on the shelves and clean all the dust from shelves and books. Then I had to go, I had to buy and I'm a typesetter, not a horse frog. I had to buy the goddamn electric cord. My coworker, Marguerite, said, get it at Ritko's. So I did and rewarded myself with my favorite snack, cheese doodles, <laughs> real bad sticky stuff. Later, I went off and shopped for a skirt and wondered what else is going on with my life. Do I skip any realities? No, because I like to have dialogues in my head that puts me in a trance-like state of being what I always want to be, an artist. I went off and tried to be casual and friendly about the people I meet. I got home not explaining that this had happened to me today. Instead, I wanted to see the new video I rented at Blockbuster. <laughs> Ilya, my boyfriend, had been sick all weekend and wanted me to do all the things to make him feel better. Sex, massage, cook, and clean up. Then. He didn't even say thank you, so I tried to be as normal as possible um, and be pragmatic to the lifestyle that I got used to and became culturally adjusted. Later, Ilya had said, we'll go for dessert, and I said, okay. We are walking down Spring Street for dessert. I have to get some form of sanity in what is happening to my life, and it is not that very clear what is happening. So, as we were walking on Spring Street, he starts picking his nose. <laughs> I am beginning to become irritated that he has such a stupid habit. And this had not been the first time. So I said to him, next thing you know, you're going to be scratching your ass. Or why don't you scratch your ass after you pick your nose? Well, that got him infuriated. And he turned 180 degrees and said, that's it. No dessert. I'm going home and don't follow me. Asshole, I screamed and walked across the street to get my own dessert my own box of favorite cookies, and bought a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> so I remain an inner city girl with nothing to do but to try to earn my own living. The next night, things got worse and we continued to argue. I could not stop. And all Ilya could do was demonstrate his physical prowess. And this is a psychologist. <laughs> which is psychoanalysis. Okay, 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 we're fast. Um, and make all sorts of threats as well as pushing and shoving me into my little area. This became louder when I threw the pots into the sink filled with bowls and plates. The shattering and the screaming became worse when he twisted my arm. I screamed with a real agony as the sharp pain shot up into my shoulder joints. He seemed not to care and realized that he was very angry, screaming psychotic words and kill, destroy, and throwing me out. He tried to make out, not run away, 
when that would be my only salvation. So he said, stay on the couch. I sat. Then, that would be my only self. Oh, then the buzzer rang and he said, who could that be? Maybe it is Kevin. Open the door. He screamed into the intercom. Who is it? And pressed the buzzer for the door to open. Two policemen came into the apartment. We got a call of domestic violence. Can you tell us the problem? We hardly ever get calls like this. What is your name? Come here and talk to me. If we have to come here again, we will put you both in jail overnight. Do you want that to happen? Cliffhanger. I'm still here. Ha, ha, ha.